Over the years since I've been in business, I've seen a lot of receptacles that's needing attended. They, they're broken or they're burnt marks on them. Uh, a lot of them's hanging out of the walls. A lot of receptacles are loose in the box that needs to be tightened correctly. You want to make sure they're nice and tight, so especially with these older homes on these metal boxes, if they, if you start to wiggle the switches, they'll hit the box and it'll short out, trip the breaker out. Burnt marks can come from uh, overloading. Uh, people have a tendency of overloading these receptacles. Uh, for instance, you can have a, a 15 amp circuit and you got a microwave or something like that that's running at least 18 amps. People will leave their microwaves on or say a vacuum cleaner and instead of turning the vacuum cleaner off they'll just plug, unplug it from the receptacle and it'll cause a spark. You really got to watch out for that. Uh, you don't want to use it. You want to get it fixed as soon as possible. On your cords, um, you want to make sure they're not cut, sliced, or do not try to repair them yourself. Don't put electrical tape around them. Just go and get you a, a brand new cord. It'll be a whole lot safer. Grounding on a cord, you have a three-prom grounding. Do not remove that grounding prom. It's for grounding your equipment or your tools, your power tools, or your radio, or whatever you're using. For instance, your uh, appliances, they need to be grounded. They need to have that uh, three-prong receptacle in there. It'll protect your appliance, your washing machine, your, uh, especially your microwaves. Um, anything in your kitchen needs to be grounded. If you want to change this thing out, you have to get a licensed electrician. He'll uh, take the old one out and put like a, a GFCI receptacle in there for a three-prong or get your house regrounded. In other words, with a two-prom, your house is not grounded. Your receptacles are not grounded. So that's when you have to do your rewiring on your receptacles to go with a three-prom. Uh, power strips, you just don't want to overload the power strips. In other words, if they've got like six strips there, you just want to put six things in there. But you don't want to put a microwave on them because it's just overloading it. When you overload a circuit, you'll definitely know it because your breaker will trip. I mean, that's automatic. For instance, you got a 15 amp breaker. Um, and really, it's only good for 80%. So you're looking at a 15 amp breaker, it's only really good for 14 amps. Uh, what I've seen in the field is I put an amp draw on something, I ask a customer to turn some uh, appliances on, and when I put my amp meter on it, I'm reading, say, uh, 20 amps. So it's automatic on a trip. So then one of the things you need to watch out for is, is how many appliances are you putting on? Pay attention to your, if you got any questions, look in your panel. For instance, say your kitchen circuit, it should be a 20 amp circuit. Or your living room, on your older homes it might be 15 amps. So you're going to kind of look and say, okay, um, what can I put on this thing? And for instance, if you, if you got any questions about it, look on, say, back of your microwave. They have a nameplate there, and it'll give you a total amps. Say your microwaves are going to be running about, say, 10 amps. And then you take 10 amps, and then you, if you have, um, uh, say, a crock pot, and it's running 10 amps, okay, that's 20 amps you're, you're looking at. So then you're saying, well, I cannot put two appliances on just one circuit. It's going to trip the breaker. So now I'm just, you know, I need to need to go ahead and just run this one appliance. Your GFCIs in your kitchen and in your bathrooms are good for your wet locations. For instance, to say if you're brushing your teeth and or washing dishes and a pan splatters and water goes in the receptacle, it's going to trip it out. And nowadays, they have these lights on the GFCIs. If the light's on, that means your GFCI's out. So they have these little reset buttons. You just push the button and it'll reset it. Uh, the GFCI is good for overloading. Say, for instance, uh, your microwave, something's going wrong with it. Um, the motor is, something's going wrong with the motor, it'll trip itself out. On your wattage, on your lights, if it says 45 watts, that's what you want to use. You don't want to go no higher. You can go lower. Say, for instance, uh, the fixture's calling for a 45 watt and you put a 100 watt, what it's going to do is going to overload your fixture and you can create a fire that way or overheat your wire. 
or you're going to trip your breaker out. Kids, whatever you do, do not stick things in the receptacle. You will get shocked, you could die, or you could have serious injury. Uh, they do have new devices now, they're called tampering resistance. It's real hard for a child to uh, even stick a knife or a pencil in there. It will, it, it's real hard to even plug anything in there, but it does work. Um, through your newer homes now, by code, uh, we have to install them now. But in your older homes, if you ever think about it, if you got kids, put them in there. You, you have these little uh, blank covers uh, you stick in there, and um, PWC does have them, or you could buy them at Home Depot or Lowe's. Make sure you do have smoke detectors. Um, they do work. Ceiling fans, if they really start to wobble real bad, you might want to call an electrician and get that fixed. If not, you're going to have a ceiling fan coming down on you. Then you're going to have a bigger mess than what you started off with. If you think you have a problem in your home, don't delay. Get it done and call an electrician, a licensed electrician.